Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our first hymn is Come People of the Risen King.
We just have one notice this morning. The Thy Kingdom Come prayer journals are available in the foyer in the church if you'd like to pick them up. Prayer cards are also there. Let's start on the service card. The words will be on the screen. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so, as usual, at the start of the service, we come to our time of confession, a time to reflect on our week, to see if there's anything we've done which would have displeased God. So I'll just give you a minute to reflect. Let us admit to God the sin which always confronts us. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Stuart is going to read the Bible for us, and after that Catherine will preach. Today's first reading is Acts 8, 26 to the end. That's Acts 8, 26 to the end. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that downs down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home he was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before the shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is this prophet talking about? He himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they travelled along the road they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptised? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and travelled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Today's Gospel reading is John 15, verses 1 to 8. John 15, verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man reminds in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me, and my word, word remains in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll start with a quote from General Sir Patrick Sanders, Commander of Strategic Command, remembering Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. The thing that always struck me about him was that he was focused entirely on the person in front of him. And he was able to engage with people as individuals. It didn't matter what your rank was. It didn't matter what your station in life was. It didn't matter what your experience was. He was interested in you, really interested, and he treated everybody the same. It's nice, it's great when you encounter someone like this. Whoever they are who focuses on you, treats you as important, and you really feel special, and you remember the meeting. You're changed as a result. You go away happy, possibly even rejoicing. So come back now to the desert road between Jerusalem and Gaza. Here we find another Philip. He's a recent appointment within the believing community in Jerusalem. He's been recruited as someone known to be full of the spirit and wisdom, as it says in Acts chapter 6, as one of those charged with ensuring the fair distribution of resources among the rapidly growing early Christian community. And one of the other appointees, Stephen, had actually been killed by the authorities in Jerusalem because he couldn't stop talking about this Jesus, the crucified and risen Messiah and Saviour. So Philip knew what was involved in his new ministry, what being part of the community could mean. But this doesn't stop him any more than it had stopped Stephen. Philip is open to God, open to the Holy Spirit's prompting go to that chariot and stay near it. And Philip's open enough to notice and to listen. The Ethiopian official, he's not Jewish by race, he's possibly in the process of converting since he's gone to the temple to worship, but at the time this took years. And he's also a eunuch and eunuchs were disapproved of by Jews and indeed by others. He's therefore not someone Philip would expect to be speaking to. He's an important officer. He's obviously got the money to buy scrolls and he's reading them. So he obviously has someone else to drive his chariot. He's not someone who would expect just anyone to approach him. But the official has a problem. The scripture he's reading is difficult to understand. Not just that it's in Hebrew, which isn't his native tongue. Isaiah's prophecy can indeed be difficult. Many people have written books on it. In fact, I had to do an essay on Isaiah last year and it's not easy. Philip runs up to the chariot. Again, not something you would usually do. Not easy. Chariots don't go slowly. So this requires energy and trust. And he hears the stranger reading. Reading aloud was how people read at the time. And reading aloud when you don't understand can be very lonely. There's no one to assist him, to discuss this with. No one else in the chariot will understand Hebrew, let alone the subject. And the driver has to keep the chariot going. The official is obviously on his way back to Ethiopia, so he can't just cha change back to Jerusalem for assistance. Philip gets to the chariot, notices, hears, and then asks, do you understand? He's invited on board, and it becomes a chariot Bible study class. Philip was open to God, 
obeyed the Spirit's prompting and noticed, listened, focused, and then asked his question, what was needed? He focused entirely on the person in front of him, engaged with him as an individual, and this meeting bore fruit. Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptised? The Ethiopian official is baptised. And then he goes on back home. And there's a tradition in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church that dates that church's founding back to this meeting. So one person at least had been changed. And the official goes on his way rejoicing. Now, in our recent readings from the book of Acts, we've seen and heard Jesus' apostles doing the same thing that Philip does here, noticing people, taking an interest in people, listening to them, really listening. Last week, for example, Rupert was telling us about the apostle Peter's boldness in preaching to the Sanhedrin, the Jewish council, just after Peter and the apostle John had healed a lame man. The man was a beggar who'd asked for money, but Peter noticed that his real need was physical healing and, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, told him to get up and walk. Go back to Easter Day, when we looked at another of Peter's sermons in the house of Cornelius, a Roman centurion, asking why Cornelius had asked for him listening to the response and then ending with Peter realising that Cornelius and his family are believers who need to be baptised, whatever anyone else thinks of Gentiles being accepted into the family of believers. These meetings bear fruit. People are changed and go on their way rejoicing. And Peter and John and Philip now are following Jesus, the crucified and risen Messiah and Saviour. Think back to our summer series last year, The God Who Notices. The Gospels are full of such meetings. Yes, sometimes Jesus preaches to the crowds, as in the Sermon on the Mount, teaches the disciples as a group, but often he has interactions with individuals or even longer conversations with them. There's this Samaritan woman. He spends ages listening and talking to her. Or on the cross, as he's dying, he sees his mother and the Apostle John and makes certain that John will look after his mother. Jesus sees people where they are, what they need, what they really need, and deals with them as individuals, focuses entirely on the person in front of him. And all these meetings bear fruit. People are changed and go on their way rejoicing. But what of us in the Christian community in 2021? In her introductory email to the Diocese of Chelmsford, Bishop Gooley, our new bishop, says, My priorities will be to meet with people, to listen, learn and develop a deeper understanding of the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Notice that Bishop Gooley puts the meeting with people and listening to them first. Only then can she learn and understand. So, what would happen if we noticed, really noticed, listened, really listened, and asked the right questions, really focused on the individual in front of us? Bishop Gully again. I have said before that I have no doubt about the scale of the challenges we face, but as I look to the future, I do so with great faith, faith and a tremendous sense of hopefulness that comes in no small part from the people I have met with since December 
and the stories I have heard about our churches and worshipping communities and their service during this most difficult of times. Things bear fruit, meetings bear fruit. As Jesus puts it, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. And to return to the Ethiopian's final question to Philip, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptised? And as we reflect now on our own baptism, our own commitment, our own realisation that we know Jesus, we come to our song for reflection all I once held dear. Oh, 
And now we come to our affirmation of faith. If you would like to, please stand. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Ian is going to lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. The COVID-19 pandemic still dominates the news, as some countries, such as India, are suffering badly from a severe lack of hospital space, doctors and equipment, giving rise to many deaths. Lord, we pray that government leaders throughout the world will follow the example of the United Kingdom and the United States and offer to share vaccines, oxygen and ventilators to help alleviate this situation. Lord, we give you thanks for the progress made in our own country as a number of new cases continue to fall and the vaccine is made available to younger people. Give strength, Lord, to all those in the vaccination programme during this difficult time. Keep them well and safe in the knowledge that they are using your gift to them for the good of everyone. Give wisdom to those in authority so that even as the lockdown is eased, the message of caution remains and that all of us understand the need to remain within the restrictions so to prevent another increase in the number of COVID-19 cases. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for spring. We give you thanks for the birds which brighten up our days with their song and colour. We thank you for the insects active in the warm weather doing their work in the garden. We thank you for the animals feeding in the fields and the woods. We thank you for the hedgerows, the trees and the flowers with their blossom and petals to enjoy. Also, Lord, we pray that you will help us all, children and adults, to play our part in looking after your planet Earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for the ministry team at Christ Church who have used their skills so that our services of worship have continued on YouTube, as well as organising today's service in church. We also give thanks for all those members of Christ Church who represent us on the District Church Council, the Deanery Synod and churches together in Billericay, our church warden and all other members of the congregation taking on the essential work. Strengthen all of our team so even during lockdown conditions, we at Christ Church can continue to worship and to once again to offer outreach, such as Messy Church and Dan Busters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need of your healing, particularly those who are suffering from the COVID-19 virus, as well as grieving the death of a loved one. Also, we pray for those on our prayer list and those known only to us who we name silently now. Lord, help them in their troubles and by your spirit be a comfort to them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now the collect for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. to the end of our service now. I'd just like to thank Stuart for his reading, Catherine for her lovely sermon, and Ian for his prayers. And I'd just like to wish you all a very good day, whatever you're doing. And we look forward to seeing you here next week, either at church or in front of the video. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light upon our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.